Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Sorry it took us a little bit to get started. Uh, we were having a chit chat in the chat. I had some stuff come up from yesterday's show, some slanders, backbiters, that kind of thing. Anyway, a lot of people ask me, Casey, how do you get access to these movies? And there are sites out there you can go to and pick these movies up. But you'll notice I'll never, ever leave you guys a link to these films because of what happened on yesterday's show. No matter how much pop-up protection you have on your computer, filters, nothing can keep some of this stuff from popping up. And so I had a couple people on yesterday's show uh, backbiting and slandering and saying that, oh, it's because you were looking at that stuff. Well, I put a link to the actual movie and you can click on it yourself and you will see what pops up. Now, I don't recommend it, but if you really need to know the truth, I put the link in the pinned comment of yesterday's video so people can go on there and rebuke these people who are slandering people like myself. Now, what burns me up is these very people are the same ones that are doing literally nothing for the kingdom. They go to work, they come home, they celebrate holidays, they go to Disney and take their children, and they go to church on Sundays for a few hours. And literally the rest of the week, they're really not talking about Jesus. And every single day we wake up, we're in the Word, we talk about Jesus, and we're trying to win people to the kingdom. So, backbiters, you have been rebuked. And the proof is in the pinned comment from yesterday's show for anyone who wants to click on it. Now, I don't recommend it. Like I said, sometimes there's viruses associated with this stuff. Now, I have the Brave browser, so this kind of protects the computer from viruses, but it won't protect you from the pop-ups. So those will still come through. So enough of that. Now, for those of you that want to stay tuned till the end of the show, I got some stories that I want to share with you about my fishing fiasco yesterday and also my son's first attempt at hard labor out here in the Ozarks. Man, they do not pay much out here. So we'll do a, like a follow-up on that at the end of the show. But today we're going to get into this new film called Day Shift. Now this is crazy. You have to see this to believe it because I couldn't believe it when I saw it. Jamie Foxx stars in this new film. Now they call it a comedy, but it's I guess it's kind of funny. But it's more like um, it's kind of got some horror in it as well. And it is literally full of all the symbolism that we've been uncovering to date. It's complete with an umbrella jab. There's a viral vampire infection. There's the hollow hypodermic teeth, the fangs. They talk about bloodlines, and the list goes on and on and on. Now, many of you will remember the decode we did on Mary Poppins, popping you with pins. And she said, a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down as she was flying in on her umbrella. Remember all that? Well, watch this. This vampire lady right here is the new Mary Poppins. Show you what we've done with this. The sky is the limit. These are words of division, darling. And So, obvious connection here. Mary Poppins, vampire style. And they're letting... They're basically taking the gloves off, aren't they? She's aligned with the sun here. She's got the umbrella. She's a vampire. And basically what she's doing is shielding the sun from this guy to basically torture him. Look at the telephone lines in the background. Copper telephone line. It's all there in this one scene. Now, let's count these splines on here. One, two, they're probably 12. Three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, what do you think? Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16 so 8 and 8 so that's 88 right now let's back this up a bit and let me give you the backdrop of this film because this is creepy 
Now, what is this all about? Well, Jamie Foxx plays a vampire hunter, and his name is Jab Longsky. Jab Longsky. You can't make this up, you guys. Now, his cover, because, you know, he's operating in plain sight, so everyone can't, you know, you know, he, they can't know that he's a vampire hunter. So his cover role is a pool boy. He basically goes around and services pools. And this is his truck. Let me, let's play this. Now, why is this important? Well, the pool has spiritual significance, as we just covered. In a movie that we just decoded called The Tower Heist. Remember the Ferrari was at the bottom of the pool? on the 45th floor of Trump International Hotel. This was five years before he would become the 45th president. And remember, the Ferrari was the spiritual ferrule of the umbrella because the tip of the umbrella is called the ferrule. Ferrule Ferrari. It's the tip. It's always been about the tip. The tip of everything. Everything is the tip. What is tip backwards? It's the pit. Leading us to the pit. So, you know, the devil has a sense of humor too. So he knows about the pit and where he'll be cast into. So he uses the tip, which is the opposite of the pit, to try to bring as many people with him as he can. So what does the tip do? The tip causes rebirth with the mnemonic spirit. That's what the tip does. Watch the opening scene of the film here and the focus on the swimming pool. Now he finds this, these dead animals floating in the pool. This is all of us. Drowned. Demonic baptism. Okay. The blue tiles. All of it. There's Jamie, there's Jamie Foxx doubling as a pool boy and a vampire hunter. Think of the metaphor with that. Okay? Vampire hunting and demonic baptism. One in the same, right? Now let's keep listening to the dialogue between this vampire leader and the other vampire. Because this is where things go off the rails. Now... Before we get into this, at the end of this show, we're also going to look at some headlines. There was actually six people that got struck by lightning in D.C. and killed. This was recently. I hadn't heard of it until now. We're also going to look at the IRS now investigating fraud from the pandemic. Huh. So we're going to talk about what all that means because this is probably what these 85,000 IRS agents are going to be doing. And if you took the bait, they're coming for you. Now, let me check in and make sure you guys are with me. And we'll continue on with this decode on Day Shift. What a crazy movie. Okay, let's keep going here. Maybe we can dig you up in a hundred years and show you what we've done with the place. The sky is the limit. These are words of division, darling, and divided we are vulnerable, but together. The same thing over and over and expecting a different result. You cling to the old ways like a tick. You Notice the tick reference. Ticks spread disease. Ticks spread viruses. These will be the vectors by which they infect us. Think about it. Ticks have basically like fangs. They're making jokes. This is why she mentions the tick. So she buries this guy under the concrete. And listen to what he says next. Because it's all about the point, remember. You've made your point. You've made your point. You've made your point. And look at where that's gotten us. You've made your point. <sighs> I oh, accept yes, your terms. Check this out. Uh, yeah, you see. So she buries him in the concrete. Now, remember the movie Snake Eyes? 
There it is right here. We covered this, didn't we? Filmed at Trump's Taj Mahal. And in that movie, at the end, a jewel is embedded into the concrete as concrete workers are building a pillar. Here are the closing credits from Snake Eyes. And the inference here is that the lady in red from the movie Snake Eyes, here she is right here, was buried in the concrete. Here's the jewel and here's the lady because she had the ring, the jewel ring. Now, what is the connection between this vampire film and Snake Eyes, the movie? Well, obviously, Trump is the connection. Warp speed. Now, if you think this is a stretch, the gun that is used in the movie by Jamie Foxx, he named it Snake Eyes. Now, how is it that all this stuff can be connected? How is it that all of this stuff can be connected? How is it that we're even finding this stuff on a supernatural level? This goes beyond writers writing things that synchronize. This goes much, much deeper if you know how to read between the lines, right? So, Snake Eyes, filmed in the Taj Mahal, was about the coming warp speed, I believe. Now, we decoded that film. If you want to check that out, I think it's under the Trump playlist. You can look up Snake Eyes and it's in there somewhere. Full decode on that movie. Now, let's keep watching this because they're going to now talk about bloodlines. Oh, you accept your terms. Check this out. Uh, yeah, you see there? Yeah, solid bloodline. Mm -hmm. Must have gotten here through Mexico or something. Now, Jamie Foxx, the way he gets paid in the movie is he basically, or well, let's call him Jablonski, which is what his name is. He gets paid by bringing the fangs of the vampires into this pawn shop owner, and he gets money for them. And it's all based on how powerful and how old the vampires that he got them from. It's like trophy teeth. Go figure. I don't know what the hell that man sees in you, Jablonski. I really appreciate the second chance. I don't know what the hell that man... I mean, are you kidding me? They think we are stupid. And believe it or not, most people... This goes right over their head. They won't even believe this. They'll say it's an accident. They'll just say that, oh, what do you mean? That has nothing to do with anything. Jablonski. Has nothing to do with anything. It was a pure accident. Has nothing to do with it. Season you, Jablonski. Did you know that a vampire cannot live without its fangs? They are the one thing we cannot regenerate. Each set is a life that could have lived a thousand lives. So, Fallen Ones, this is how they're going to try to prepare us through the bite of the vampire. Now, we're going to get into some of these headlines today. That was pretty much it for Day Shift. It was kind of a short decode. It, a lot of these films, they have like a few like really... Um, you know, crazy connections and symbolism. And then the rest of it's just fluff. Okay, it happens sometimes in some of these films, especially these low-budget comedy films. Uh, but I think we pulled about everything there was out of that film. So let's get caught up on some of these headlines today. I'm going to check with you guys real quick first, and we'll get caught up on some of these headlines today. Everybody make it in? Cool, cool, cool. Let's see what you guys think about this before we get into some of these headlines. Yes, the pool is the loop, redeemed. It's like a time loop. It's a portal. Very good observation there. Okay. Everything in cinema is on purpose. Yes, everything is specific. You know, I used to think that, uh, you know, 
only animations were like that because they have to actually put every pixel on the screen but now it appears as though even films every microsecond of that film has been carefully planned and programmed so uh oh dom has no sound i have to refresh somebody please tell dom to refresh yeah jablonski is right there i mean you can't make it up all right let's get into some of these headlines now some of these stories are kind of funny and looks like home run pizza has struck out hopefully none of you are eating home run pizza from chicago Thirteen thousand pounds of frozen pizza tainted with metal now how could this be you know i'm a firm believer that sometimes these things are done on purpose it's all about mixing steel with watery clay isn't it Thirteen thousand pounds of frozen pizza were called recalled over fears that they might have been contaminated with extraneous materials specifically metal the 33 and a half ounce um strikeout pizza i'm sorry chicago's home run in pizzas topped with sausage pepperoni onions and peppers would have a best buy date of december 3rd the frozen pizzas and the recall were made on june 6th of course it was made on 6 6 right the number of apollo 66 and the problem was discovered when the firm noticed fsis that it had received consumer complaints reporting metal was found in the pizza as the announcement sunday there have been no confirmed reports of injuries or adverse reactions except for the turning you into a remote control 5g ro i mean due to the consumption of these products the makers of this pizza home run in frozen foods are based in woodridge illinois about 30 miles southwest of chicago wow strikeout pizza let's see what the people have to say here in the comments <clears throat> now <laughs> that's a shame because home run pizza is so good huh wow anyway <laughs> rename it anemic pizza that's pretty funny all right let's keep going with these headlines here that was a silly one but i thought you guys might enjoy that story it's hard to tell which which ones of these stories are real and which ones aren't aren't isn't it now here's bo jive and people tell me you don't do enough decodes on bo jive and well he's pretty much irrelevant but i will call him out when he needs to be called out and it looks like he's just canned the ev tax credit for new electric cars but he's giving a smaller tax credit for used electric vehicles now what's this all about let's read this now this is going to have an immediate impact on people like uh elon musk right who's selling electric cars and california direct hit to california who's selling a lot of brand new electric vehicles because less people are going to buy electric vehicles if they're not getting this seventy five hundred dollar tax credit right so i wonder if we're going to hear a bunch of grumblings about that so, 4000 it went from basically got cut in half, and they're only giving it for used electric vehicles. Now, what, what could be the incentive behind this? Uh, could it be that the grid is under so much pressure that they're just going to have people recycling the old vehicles? Could it be that they um, secretly have no idea how they're going to get rid of all these batteries, and they're kind of panicking right now? I don't know the answers to that. But something is amiss. Why would you make this huge? Why would you make this huge thing? You know, this huge tax credit, pump everybody up, tell everyone to go electric, and say that all the fleet is going to be electric in the federal government, and everything's going to go electric, and then all of a sudden pull this out from under the rug. Something is going on here, isn't there? I don't know what it is, but when you use critical thinking, something is not right. Now, let's get on to this next story. CBS News. Not Yahoo. CBS. California governor announces aggressive plan, a plan to boost water supply. So here we have the second coming of Gavin at it again. And now he's going to make water. He's going to turn desert into water. With a swipe of a hand. Now let's read this. 
Now, all jokes aside, you know, California should have been working on collecting rainwater and snow melt a long time ago. I can remember from the time I was a child in California. And yeah, we had lots of reservoirs and lakes and stuff. But, you know, these are the people talking about global warming, right? These are the ones that have been talking about this. Why weren't they making new reservoirs? Why weren't they finding ways to collect more rainwater because of drought? Why is it just now that they're doing it? Is it that the, they wanted us to feel the pain? Is that what's going on? I never understood why California didn't do a better job storing all that snow melt that's up in the mountains. There's a lot of different ways that they could have been focused on this. And guess what? They would have had a stronger economy for it. it would have had growth. Because more water, more growth, right? But instead, it's shortage, shortage, shortage. It's always shortage. You would think that this would be a priority for a state that grows much of the food in the United States and a good part of the world. You would think that water would be of the highest importance. That no matter how much it costs to invest in these reservoirs and creating new water, that they would have done it by now. Let's read this. California Governor Nuisance has this week announced an aggressive new plan to tackle the state's water shortage. A billion dollar strategy detailed in a 16 page document aims to reinforce California's dwindling water supply. As the burdens of global warming and historic drought conditions show no sign of slowing down, Nuisance is looking to expand the state's water supply. The science of the data leads us now to understand that we will lose 10% of our water by 2040. And he visited a desalination plant Thursday. And now there's a renewed sense of urgency to address this issue head on. Now, understand that this is after ten, an entire decade or more of forcing farmers into having to interact with the government and take subsidies to stay afloat. So when you, remember, when you take a subsidy, you lose all your power. You're now indebted to the subsidy. You're indebted to the debt. That you received so that this has been going on for a decade so most of the farmers have sold out because of all of the drought and not getting enough water to grow their crops so that happened first and now all of a sudden they want to get serious about creating water the new plan titled california's water supply strategy adapting to a hotter drier future gosh that's a word sandwich cwss a H D F highlights methods to boost water levels and make up for water loss caused by climate change. Four main goals outlined are to create storage for four million acre feet of stormwater. Yeah, should have been done 25 years ago. Recycle and reuse 800,000 acre feet of wastewater per year by 2030. I don't like that idea, especially since they're finding polio in the wastewater employ more efficient water conservation techniques okay desalination which is very expensive so this is what's going on you guys unbelievable now understand that there are huge areas in the central valley where there isn't a lot going on and they could literally make many or micro reservoirs all throughout the foothills and this water could be trickled down it just needs a way to be collected without evaporating there's many many ways to do this now this would take an engineer to pull this stuff off but they've done if they can build the hoover dam then they can build reservoirs in california it's just that they don't want to do it now they're deciding to because they've got everyone on their knees at this point don't they so, here's what's going on. Nuisance. It's going to make water out of nothing. Now, this next story is crazy. I hadn't heard this, but apparently, you know, Lucifer fell like lightning from heaven. Many of you will remember the live coverage we did on the Fill the Mall. Fill the Mall concert 
in DC on the lawn. Fill them all, which sounds like catch them all Pokemon. And remember, they had launched that Pokemon app. Catch them all. It was like a virtual demons on the Pokemon. And this was people were playing this at the concert because they launched it that day. Fill them all, catch them all. And then there was all the phallic imagery. Remember, we showed you the promotional video to get people to show up to this thing. And it was a, you know what? Now, this we were on hot on the trails of this concert because it was definitely a setup. There was an all-inclusivity theme going on there, basically softening the target of the Christian walk, which we don't need any more of that. And then remember, as we were watching it live, lightning struck the Washington Monument. Well, it appears as though it's happened again. This lightning strike took out six people with one bolt. Uh, do you think they're trying to send a message here? Let's play this. Part of this, anyway. Let's see what they have to... Whoa. That's for the first time. Did you see Eva that? Eva Pilgrim is here now with the latently lightning strike near the White House. She's talking Bam. about those moments for the first time. Eva Pilgrim is here now with the latest on her recovery and the reunion... Now, there was one survivor, and she's, like, got survivor's guilt because six of her friends died. Oh, look, I wouldn't be caught within... 200 miles of this building after what we showed you with when we outlined the hypodermic needle the 88 degree alignment uh the hypodermic needle being invented from the civil war and the point of that needle basically pointing to lincoln memorial i wouldn't be caught with caught within 200 miles of this place after the stuff that we've looked at but here we go Six of her friends got taken. Let's read this. I don't want to play this for copyright, but in an exclusive interview with Good Morning America, Amber sits down to talk for the first time about being the sole survivor of a lightning strike near the White House earlier this month on her 28th birthday and her road to recovery. Now, the number 28 is a spiritual number. Basically, it means sacrifice. It's the, the, the monthly... Uh, renewal and sacrifice birth and death is what 28 stands for and Jesus became that after 14 and 14 generations from David there was actually 42 total generations from Abraham but it's broken up into 14 increments 14 and 14 is 28 Jesus then became the sacrifice Blood and water coming out of his side basically took on all of the sin so that we wouldn't have to through our belief in him. Let's see what she has to say about this. August 4th, 8-4. Uh, she was canvassing outside the White House for Threshold Giving, a nonprofit organization through the International Rescue Committee that helps refugees. When she and three others took cover underneath a tree... At Lafayette Square after it began to rain. Oh, wow. So I guess trees don't protect you from lightning strikes. This poor lady. She's on a walker. What? Six bolts of lightning struck the group within half a second. Six bolts. Killing three others, including 76-year-old James Mueller. And 75-year-old Donna Mueller. A married couple celebrating their anniversary. When will we learn, you guys? When will we learn? The devil rules this world. Also killed a 29-year-old Los Angeles man who was in D.C. for business. Lightning struck her through the ground and traveled through her body, resulting in significant burns on her body. This poor lady. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. I don't know why I survived. She said, I don't feel good about being the only survivor, that's for sure. I'm grateful, but I just don't feel good about being the only one. So, very, very weird, right? Look at this. Look at the size of that lightning bolt. Wow. So, now, <clears throat> here's our last story, and I gotta be careful how I talk about this. Okay. 
but basically looks like another honey trap has emerged. Pandemic fraud. Now, what did people think was going to happen? When you start handing out checks with little oversight. I mean, how hard is it to do proper banking? The New York Times. Prosecutors struggle to catch up to a tidal wave of pandemic fraud. Now, this is probably our most important story today. I want you guys to listen carefully. What happens when you cross state lines and try to take or fill up your gas tank? Have you guys ever had it happen to you? It happens to me all the time. All of a sudden, your card doesn't work. You get a text message. It says, uh, there's suspicious activity on your account. Please text yes if this is your card. If not, text no. Sometimes, this happened to me actually when I went to France. Couldn't get my card to work. They're like, well, what are you doing in France? I'm like, it's none of your business what I'm doing in France. Well, you need to let us know. Uh, okay, this is for your protection. Now, if this can happen through Bank of America, they've got a, such a close tab on your accounts and everything that you do, and any little thing you do that goes outside the normal, they shut you off. Why is it that there was all this fraud happening during the pandemic? It's almost like they wanted it to happen. This is why they did such a horrible job verifying who should and shouldn't get a stimulus check or a loan. Now, this is my opinion, but I believe that part of this may, may have been intentional, or at least they weren't doing the best that they could to make sure that this money went where it was supposed to go. Now, remember, most of this money came out under Trump. And a lot of right-leaning people had a false sense of security, didn't they? Just like the trap that gave people of color a sense of false sense of security to go out and flash mob stores and pick up all the shoes they wanted. False sense of security. You feel like the media is behind you. You feel like everything's good. I can do it because they're doing it. Now, if you bit the apple and you tried to cheat on the pandemic money, the feds are now coming for you. Uh, do you think this is what all these IRS agents could be for? The 85,000 IRS agents? You guys were talking almost a trillion dollars. Now look at this article here on the IRS website. This is right off the website. Feds charge 19 defendants with pandemic fraud. This is June 22nd of this year, you guys. They're coming for the fraudsters. This is probably why they hired all these agents and they say here the that the irs has a commitment to defend the integrity of the pandemic relief program so this is their investigative unit there are going to be thousands of people that they're going to come after and look <clears throat> i don't know what trump was saying during these years about these loans but it sure did sound like he was like hey pockets are open everybody come and get it come and get it now he's all about the rule of law isn't he but he wasn't talking about how people were cheating on this stuff when it was happening if you're about the rule of law then you set up a program or system to, so that this doesn't happen right that's what i would think anyway Sorry, I had to clear my throat there. All right, so let's read about this fraud. This is nuts. So why do they have a Pokemon card there? Let's read this little caption here. 50, uh, Vinoth Udsimi, whatever, bought a $57,000 Pokemon card after receiving a pandemic loan. Oh my gosh, this guy bought a Pokemon card with his loan. In the midst of the spamdemic, the U.S. government gave unemployment benefits to the incarcerated, the imaginary, and the dead. It sent money to farms that turned out to be front yards. It paid people who were on the government's do-not-pay list. It gave loans to 342 people who said their name was not applicable. Well, that's shame on you then. Not shame on the people who did it. 
I mean, no one should be doing this, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, think about all the unemployment benefits a lot of people got. Well, if they find anything wrong with that, um, you're going to either go to jail or have to pay it all back. As a virus shuttered businesses and forced people out of work, federal government sent a flood of relief money into programs aimed at helping the newly unemployed and boosting the economy. That included $3.1 trillion, former President Donald Trump approved in 2020, followed by $1.9 trillion by Joe Biden. But those dollars came with few strings and minimal oversight. Why was there minimal oversight? The result, one of the largest frauds in American history with billions of dollars stolen by thousands of people, including at least one amateur who boasted of his criminal activity on YouTube. Now prosecutors are trying to catch up. There are currently 500 people working on the pandemic fraud cases across the offices of 21 inspectors general. Now you can imagine that after these 85,000 get hired on by the IRS, they're probably going to add to these roles. They got the FBI, the Secret Service, the Postal Inspection. Remember I told you the post office was going to be involved in all this? Well, here you go. The federal government has already charged 1,500 people with defrauding pandemic aid programs, and more than 450 people have been convicted so far. Now, who do you think they're going to go after first in this honey trap? Anyone... Who threatens the establishment? Agents in Labor Department Inspector General Office have 39,000 investigations going right now. That's a lot of people, you guys. About 50 agents in Small Business Administration Office are sorting through 2 million potentially fraudulent loan applications. Now, where was all this concern when they were handing out the money? False sense of security. Wow. Now, if you're having trouble understanding what a honey trap is, let me explain. Honey traps feed off of a false sense of confidence in an authority figure that you trust. It often comes along with some kind of too-good-to-be-true offer, which is exactly what the all this money that was being handed out was, wasn't it? Usually it's somewhat complicated, and so you just go with it, and I'm sure there's fine print in all these loans, some trigger mechanism that makes probably a lot of people who got the loans in some kind of default or in some kind of error. Remember Trump was saying you wouldn't have to pay him back even? Remember all that? That's what I remember. Oh, you don't have to pay him back. Usually these money traps come along with something that they're saying you're getting for free. And then they later use it to trap you or to get you caught up in some kind of trouble. You guys, you need to understand that Trump was never our friend. He gave a lot of people a false sense of security. He would often say things that he knew he could never enforce or he, that he could never get past. Now, understand that any threat to our uh, system of governance is being dealt with at the highest levels. Nothing, absolutely nothing is left to chance. Do you think that they're going to leave the greatest country in the world, the most wealthy country in the world, all this money? you think they're going to leave any of this to chance? Of course not. It's carefully controlled. And if you don't believe me, look what happened after Blind 11. Remember, they were going after threats, and they literally lured people in with promises of money, very elaborate schemes. They basically created the whole scenario for the person, offered to fund it and everything, to finally get them to admit on a phone call or a text message that they wanted to harm America. And then they went in for the arrest. They basically groomed these people. And do you really think that our government wouldn't do the same thing to the very people that the FBI has already named as the top domestic threat, which is you and me, people who don't believe official stories? Of course they would. Of course they would. I guess Trump didn't do such a great job going after the deep state, did he? When his own FBI was calling us the threat and he didn't even take a minute to correct the record. 
and then the very same deep state FBI comes after him or so they want us to believe so what is my advice well don't say irresponsible things online don't take the bait it's bait they're trying to bait you into something they want all free thinkers off the chessboard they want us all off the chessboard but they have to be careful how they do it they have to trap you into it so that they can continue on with their agenda now let's go into the chat here that was pretty much the show for today hope you guys enjoyed the show and learned something today learn that jesus has all of this under control in the next life when we're saved we have to endure till the end things aren't always going to go the way we want them to go in this life but you have to endure till the end and then you'll have eternity keep believing keep trying keep trying to win people to the kingdom and that's what he asks of us all right pray without ceasing absolutely all right yes we will make it together all right so anything you guys want to talk about before we pop off here oh that's right i was going to tell you my fish stories <laughs> well let me tell you the mac story first poor kid I, I shouldn't call him a kid i got rebuked by some people don't say the word kid my child and you know he we're out here kind of in the middle of nowhere there's not a lot of opportunities for work and but uh the landlord which they're pretty much millionaires out here um decided that you know hey we'll we'll take max on we'll hire him he can do some work for us and like how much you want you know max is from california so out there the minimum wage is close to 18 bucks an hour but of course you have the cost of living you have high rent and all that stuff well out here in old arkansas you're lucky to get 13 bucks an hour and so he they called him up one morning now his sleep schedule has been off so he's pretty much going to bed the time i wake up and he did not have a good time out there he came back his legs were sore he's like dad i can't do this <laughs> i'm like i'm sorry son and so now he's trying to get into some online work um basically reselling electronics and hopefully he can do okay with that because there's not a lot of opportunity out here what's shocking is people with money they're like some of the most i don't want to use the word but how do you think they got their money it's by watching their spending right but it, when you're dealing with human beings and people that are actually willing to show up you know it's just shocking how people treat people sometimes you know and part of his negative experience was how he was treated you know the work faster work faster i was kind of shocked you know like you know what why would you treat someone like that but apparently that's what's going on out here he was stacking logs as the guy was cutting him down up against the tree he had to stack logs he was doing this for hours and weed pulling which isn't easy either and so that's what's been going on with my son that's the update so pray for him that he finds something that he can do that he can make a little bit of money he doesn't want to be rich but you know he needs money to putz around i don't charge him rent because i just don't because my mom never charged me rent when i had to go back and stay with her for different periods of my life and uh he just needs a break you know so what else is going on oh, let me tell you about my funny fish story so i got this float tube as you guys know and everyone's like casey why don't you just buy a kayak well because i'm already invested in this float tube i think i spent a hundred dollars on it like five years ago and i really never got to fully take this thing out and actually make it work so i've been retrofitting this thing it looks like a floating fortress right now it's got it's got a tiny fish finder on it. It's got my fish stringer. It's got all these compartments on it. So, 
And then on top of that, I got a trolling motor, like a micro trolling motor. So I stick this thing on there and I'm trolling around out in the lake. And it was kind of fun, but the, it wasn't attached quite right. And it needs some more modifications because basically the trolling motor wants to jump out of the water. For those of you that have had to deal with a trolling motor before. So I've got my, my night crawler out. I'm out in the middle of the lake and I'm like, okay, this is nice. I turn around and the spool pops off my reel and down into the lake. I'm trying to pull this thing up feverishly. I'm pulling the line, pulling the line. It's just spooling out as it's falling to the bottom of the lake. I finally get the spool into the the float tube and I've got this pile of braided line in my lap and I'm just laughing at myself. I'm like, how did that happen? And then I'm trying to spool this thing on and I'm just like, this is not going to happen out in the middle of the lake. I, there's no way I'm going to wind this thing all the way back up. And then where's the top to the spool? Somehow I lost it. And I'm just going, wow. Then I had actually caught a flathead catfish. He was only about maybe 14 inches long. Had him on the stringer, but I forgot to pull him up out of the stringer out of the water before I decided to head back to the shore. So I've got the trolling motor going and it's it's going, it's going. All of a sudden I hear grind, 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 smash, 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 and blood everywhere. The poor catfish got ground up in the trolling motor. I'm like okay, I need to get off this lake. I'm going to hurt myself because things are not going well. And I knew it was the devil just trying to mess with me, right? Because all of you guys tell me, Casey, you need to go out and get do some fishing, do something else. You can't just do this all day. What is it, what did it say in the movie The Shining? All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, right? I don't want to be a dull boy. I need to be fresh. So I need to get out and get some exercise and fish a little bit and take my mind off of all this stuff. And the poor catfish met his end, and that was the end of him. So, I've made some modifications to the flow too. I think I fixed the problem. I'm going to be more focused and not make dumb mistakes like that. And, oh, here's the last thing that happened. So, I get on shore, and I'm like, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to catch some fish. I could see him jumping all around, big giant fish jumping out of the water. So I put on my little micro jig and I throw my little micro jig out there and I catch a bluegill. I'm like, cool, I'm going to put him on a hook and try to catch a giant bass. So I throw the, throw the bluegill out there, right? Nothing, nothing. This goes on for an hour. You guys, I was out there all day long. Bill says, you don't need a trolling motor. Yeah, you know, I tried the, the fins, but I'm looking for range. And I don't want to, I want to be fishing rather than paddling and finning with my feet. And also, Bill, I was thinking of the future, like in the fall when the water gets colder, uh, I don't want my feet in the water. So if you check out on my TikTok, you can actually see the, the retrofits that I've done. There's actually more retrofits going on. It doesn't have the trolling motor on the TikTok video, but you can actually see how I put like basically a large bucket. That you can sit in where your feet don't even go in the water on this thing it's actually pretty cool so it's basically like a kayak with pontoons on it is what it looks like anyway long story short i get on shore and i try this bluegill out and it, it doesn't work so i catch a smaller bluegill and i cut them up for bait i'm like okay cause someone told me hey you can use cut bluegill for channel catfish so i'm like okay i'm gonna catch a channel catfish now so Cut this bluegill up for bait. I throw him out there. And it's starting to get a little bit hot. I think it was in like the high 80s. I hop in my truck. And I'm watching the the pole from my truck with the air conditioner on. After trying to watch the pole for like an hour. And I'm like, I'm just going to go sit in the truck. The second I go to sit down in the truck. The real, the, the pole falls over. Something's on it. So I run out the truck and I try to grab the reel and the pole and there's nothing there. I'm like, how does that happen? This happened four times. Finally, I'm like, I'm not leaving this pole. I'm going to sit right next to this pole. I'm standing there on the bank with the pole in my hand. 
And there it goes again. And I pick up the pole and I've got it hooked. I'm reeling it in and it's heavy. What do you guys think was on the end of the line? Let's see who gets it first. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. What do you think was on the end of the line? <laughs> Let's see who gets it first. Unbelievable. Nope, not a big fish. Warrior for truth. Someone will get it. The fisherman will get it. Spoonbill, nope. Spool top, nope. Turtle. Jamie got it. <laughs> it was a turtle. It was a beautiful turtle. He had like red markings, like orange markings. I pull the thing up and it's hissing at me. It's like it's like a I don't I'm like, dude, I didn't know turtles hiss. This is unbelievable. And he's and I'm like, okay, I gotta go home now. It's over. I failed. Uh, you know, I'm to the point now. I'm just gonna pay someone to take me out to fish. To fish, I want to get on a boat. I want to like maybe someone that knows how to fish for crappie. I want to fill up a cooler with crappie and eat the fish. That's all I want to do. But I realized that I'm a pretty terrible fisherman when it comes to freshwater. I'm pretty good at salt water, but not freshwater. So that's the fishing stories. Get you guys all caught up on that. And uh, I'll probably do a TikTok video to show you my trolling motor modification on the float tube. Because it's actually kind of cool. I had to actually fabricate some plywood. Basically make a side transom. And uh, use some straps and things to get it to kind of stay on there. And uh, so that's what's going on with that. Leon asks what's my email address. It's CaseyBrown1973 at gmail.com. All right, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and pop off of here. I love each and every one of you. Hope you guys have a great day. Take care and be safe.